All right. So once we're all set, I'm thirsty. We're going to start by lying down in Shavasana. And I do want you to cover yourselves with your blanket. And so you're going to cover as much of your body with your blanket as possible. And Fantastic. So we're going to start in our Shavasana shape and you will cover your body with your blanket. And once you're in your blanket, I do encourage you to actually take the opportunity to sort of spread your arms wide. So it feels like you're actually able to just have your shoulder blades rest onto the back body and rest onto the floor. And then you'll notice what it feels like to maybe even spread your legs a little further apart. And then I want you to just take a few moments and to take a few breaths and just to notice what it feels like to actually allow yourself to feel the support of the floor beneath you, to feel the weight of the blanket on top of you. And then you'll just take about four to five deep breaths. So despite the snow that has blessed us this morning, we are getting ready to go into some of our favorite time of the year, spring and our gardening season. And we're allowing ourselves the opportunity to let our body fall back into alignment so that we can start to plant those seeds that we would like to see grow over the next few months, next few years. And so as you're here for the next few breaths, I encourage you to continue to just notice where you can soften, where you can release any unnecessary holding or tightening and just really feel nurtured by the blanket really feel supported by the floor. And if you'd like, you'll start to just allow more and more weight to drop, to feel the earth beneath you, the earth that is you. We'll take our last four breath cycles here. And again, you just let yourself breathe. You let yourself be. At the end of your next exhalation, you'll gently bend one knee at a time and plant that foot on the floor. And then the other foot on the floor. Then draw your knees towards your chest. Give yourself a hug. And some of you might choose to take that hug and be still. Some of you might choose to take that hug and rock a little right to left. You might notice that in this sort of embryo or seed shape, you might wanna curl your chin towards your chest, your forehead towards your knees and feel what that feels like to really be engaged in the upper body there. And then some of you will rock forward and back along your spine. Some of you will roll over to one of your sides, but gently you'll make your way up to sit and then make your way to hands and knees. At this point, you can discard the blanket. And you'll just take a moment to find yourself on your hands and knees. Great. Once you're on your hands and knees, we're going to take the slowest cats and cows we've taken in a really long time. So make sure your hands are directly underneath your shoulders. Your knees are directly underneath your hips. Go ahead and drop your belly. Drop your heart space. Draw your sternum forward, your gaze forward and up. And then you'll just take four breath cycles here, really pressing the hands down, really drawing the shoulder blades onto the back body. Lifting the heart forward, lifting the gaze up, lifting the tailbone up, and just notice what it feels like to breathe into this 
cow shape pose. And then as you're ready, you'll start to tuck your chin to your chest. You'll round through your spine and you'll take about four breath cycles in your cat shape, pressing the hands down and wide, really lengthening the back of the head, the back of the tailbone down. When you're ready, we'll start to add breath to movement. So you'll inhale and come to your cow shape pose. And then you'll exhale and go into your cat shape pose. And you've got four more of these on your own, just playing with your breath, exploring your movement, exploring your body. Nice work. And just notice how your breath's a little slower and the movement's a little slower. It's a little fuller, it's a little deeper. Nice work. After your fourth exhalation, you'll inhale and come to a neutral spine. Walk your knees, your ankles, and your shins together. Curl your toes under and then start to press your pelvis back towards your heels. Walk your hands back and sit up for toe squat. And at this point, you might choose to just elevate your pelvis on something because if there's too much compression in your knees. And then you'll reach your right arm up, bend your right elbow and grab your right elbow with your left hand. Gently press the right elbow to the right as you draw it to the left. And then notice what it feels like to really draw your front ribs into your back body to stack your shoulders over your hips. Press your head slightly back so your chin stays parallel-ish to the floor. And you've got one more breath cycle here. Very gently, you'll inhale and reach your left arm up, reach your right arm up, and then switch sides, bending the left elbow, hugging the left elbow to the right as you press the left elbow to the left. Drawing the shoulders over the hips, the front ribs into the back body. And just take a long, deep breath. When you're ready, you'll inhale and reach up through your right arm, reach up through your left. As you exhale, both hands come down to the floor in front of you. Extend the tops of your feet to the floor and then lightly pitter-patter your feet against the floor. From there, you'll shift your weight back and maybe take a counter stretch, lifting one end or both knees up and away from the floor and just experience what this feels like. Moving as mindfully, as fully and as present as you can. Nice work. From here, let's go ahead and crawl ourselves back to hands and knees. Walk your hands about one hand print forward. Curl both sets of toes under, take a big breath in and exhale back to downward facing dog. Now, when you find yourself in your downward facing dog, the first thing I'd like you to do is bend both knees, send your hips up to where the ceiling and the wall meet, and then just straighten your right leg. And just notice what it feels like just to straighten the right leg. Left knee is bent, feeling the stretch on the back of the right leg. Continuing to breathe deeply and then inhale, bend both knees. And exhale, just straighten the left leg. Noticing what that feels like as the right knee bends and the left leg is straight. Pressing the hands down and forward and the armpits lift up and away from the floor. Nice job. And then you'll gently inhale, bend both knees. And if you'd like to, you'll just walk your dog a little bit more. So you've got three more breath cycles in this shape. You might shift the weight from right to left. You might stay completely in stillness, but you're just paying attention to what it feels like. Nice work. Those that are in movement, go ahead and come to stillness. Let's all inhale, come forward into plank pose. Pause here. Draw your low bellies in and up. Lift your hips a little higher and then spin both heels to the right. Keep pressing your left hand into the floor. 
Keep lifting your underside up and you're just gonna breathe here for three breaths. Nice work. Next in breath, let's go ahead and come back to center. Swivel your heels towards the left. Keep pressing your right hand down into the mat and lifting your underside so your left hip up and away. Nice job. Big breath in and big breath out. Inhale, come to center. As you exhale, shift your weight forward and lower all the way down onto your abdomen. Now, when you find yourself on your bellies, go ahead and take a moment to separate your feet hip distance apart. Press your toenails down into the mat. Press your pubic bone down into the mat and draw your low belly up towards your sternum. From there, lightly press into your hands to draw your shoulders up towards your ears and draw your shoulder blades onto your back. Now, gently, you'll start to pull your hands back to pull your sternum forward and lift your chest up. Once you started to do that, I want you to isometrically pull wide on your mat right to left. Notice how that allows your elbows to wing out a little bit and then squeeze your shoulder blades together, hug your elbows towards each other and feel like the back of the shoulder blade is pushing the heart forward. Nice job. Next exhale, lower all the way down. Make sure your hands are right in line with your nipples. So thumbs in line with your nipples. There we go. And then you'll try that again. Inhaling, coming into your cobra. And you're just taking about three to four breaths to get there keeping the legs active, the shoulder blades are allowing the coaxing of the heart open. And then when you're ready, you'll exhale and lower down. And then third time's the charm. Come up, pressing down into your legs, keeping the low belly long, low back long. Yeah. And then exhale, lower all the way down. Fantastic. Curl your toes under, draw your low belly in, and then inhale up to hands and knees. Straighten your legs to plank and press back to downward facing dog. Fantastic. And then as you're in this down dog, press down and forward through the L shape of your hands. Keep lifting up through the inner edges of your armpits and just breathing and noticing what you notice. Inhale, sweep your right leg up and back. And then as you exhale, draw your right knee to your nose, plant the right foot between your hands. Pause. Make sure, yeah. Make sure you have a long stance in the front foot to the back foot. Step your left hand underneath your left shoulder and then go ahead and bring your right hand to your heart. Okay, now lift your back thigh a little bit. Yep, hug your outer hips in towards each other. So squeeze the right hip to the left, the left hip to the right, lift your head so it's parallel to the floor. And then as you exhale, start to empty the belly on the right side, push down into the left hand and rotate your rib cage towards the right. Now with your hand on your heart, push your hand into your heart, push your heart into your hand and notice how that starts to open up the chest just a little bit. Scoop the belly a little bit more on the right side, lightly pushing sternum into hand. Fantastic. Some of you will stay here. Some of you will reach your right arm up towards the sky. Some of you will stay there hugging the shoulder blades onto the back, leaning your heart into your, into your shoulder blades. Some of you will bend the right elbow and take a half bind. So just allowing the back of the hand to rest at the back of your pelvis. And again, you might open that right shoulder a little bit more towards the ceiling, breathing, and just noticing how this feels. Nice work. If you took the half bind, inhale, reach the right arm back up to the sky. Exhale, frame the front foot. Pause, spin your back foot to the floor completely for warrior two. Bring both hands to the inside edge of your right foot. 
and walk them to the upper left-hand corner of your space. Push your hands down and forward. Push your pelvis back and continue to hug your outer right hip in. And now for each of you, you may need to play with this. Some of you will keep walking your hands a little bit more towards the left. So that's towards the back of your mat. Some of you will walk your hands underneath your shoulders a little bit more, but you're just paying attention to where your back leg, you can feel a engagement of the left pinky toe side of the leg pressing down into the mat. You can feel the outer right hip. So that's the front hip opening. And you can feel that the weight is mostly in your legs. Yeah, there we go. On your next in-breath, return to a low lunge facing the top of your space. And then exhale, step back, downward facing dog, pause. Notice what you notice between your right side and your left side. How does the front of the hip feel? The back of the hip, the front of the leg, the back of the leg. Inhale, sweep your left leg up and back. As you exhale, knee to nose, plant the foot gently between your hands. Fantastic. And then same thing. So make sure you have a long stance front to back. Walk your right hand underneath your right shoulder. Lift your right thigh up and away from the floor a little bit. And then hug your outer left hip towards the right, your outer right hip towards the left. Bring your left hand to your heart. Lift your spine parallel-ish to the floor. Yep. And then start to exhale, lifting your left low belly away from your left thigh, rolling your rib cage towards the left. Now again, you'll push your sternum into your hand. Notice how that allows the chest to open. Keep lifting the outer right hip, and you might stay here. You might reach your left arm up towards the sky. You might stay there hugging shoulder blades onto the back body. You might bend your left elbow, bring the back of the palm to rest on your pelvis, and then maybe coax the left shoulder a little bit more towards the sky. Yeah. And then you just pause and you breathe. Fantastic. If you took that half bind, inhale, reach the left arm up towards the sky. Exhale, lower the hand to the floor. Pivot the ball or pivot the whole back foot to the floor. Suspend the right foot to the floor for warrior two. Bring both hands to the inside edge of your left foot. Now from here, you might walk your hands to the upper right hand corner of your space and push your pelvis in opposition. Some of you may walk your hands a little bit more towards the right. You're paying attention to how this feels in your legs and your hips and your spine. Your hands might be directly underneath your shoulders or you might have walked them away from you, but you're hugging your outer left hip in towards your inner right thigh and pressing the knife edge of your right foot to the floor. Nice work. Next in-breath, return to a low lunge facing the top of your space. As you exhale, step back to plank pose. Take a breath cycle here, noticing what it feels like to lift the back of your head in plank, lifting your inner thighs up. Fantastic. Next inhalation, shift your weight forward. And then as you exhale, lower all the way down onto your abdomen. Okay, with your thumbs in line with your nipples, separate your feet hip distance apart. Again, press your toenails down into the mat, straighten through the legs, and then press your pubic bone down. When you're ready, you'll start to draw your navel towards your sternum, draw your ears up towards your shoulders, your shoulder blades onto your back, and lift your head in line with the tops of your shoulders. Great. Now, again, Isometrically pull your hands back to pull your heart forward and see if you can lift your chest a little higher. Awesome. Some of you will stay right here. Some of you will start to reach so far back through your legs that you'll start to reach your legs, your feet, 
all of that off the floor. Some of you will stay right there, drawing your low belly forward and isometrically drawing your shoulder blades onto your back. Some of you may hover your hands off the floor and breathe for three and breathe for two and breathe for one. Exhale, lower down. Curl your toes under. Your choice, hands and knees or plank pose. And then exhale, make your way back to downward facing dog. Then you'll just take three breaths. What are the things you're trying to plant? What are the things you're hoping to cultivate? Sometimes we have to slow down in order to give ourselves the capacity to process. Give it things the time they need to take. Let's go ahead and try the other side. Inhale, sweep your left leg up and back. As you exhale, draw your left knee to your nose. Plant your foot between your hands. Pause. Now at this point in time, make your fingertips really super light and you'll start to draw your low belly away from your front thigh. Press down into your left foot, press down into your right foot and see if you can bring both hands to prayer at heart center. Yeah. Now from here, make a diagonal from your back foot through your hips, through your shoulders, through your head. Yeah, and you're gonna stay here. On your next exhalation, start to empty the belly on the left side and rotate your rib cage towards the left. And so we're in this sort of diagonal position, rotating to the left. You're feeling your sternum press into your hands. Your hands push into your sternum. Your heart opens. Nice work. Next in-breath, unwind the spine. As you exhale, spin the back foot to the floor and come to warrior two, still keeping your hands at your heart center for a moment. And I want you to push your sternum into your thumbs so you can really lift up through there. Now press into the knife edge of your back foot, just like we did a, a few moments ago, and hug the outer left edge of your hip in. Now, once you have all that established, go ahead and radiate through the arms, extending them out right to left for Virbha Hadrasana 2. Nice work. And then you'll notice if you can pause and you can breathe there, continue to bend into the front knee to the best of your ability. And then reach up through your left arm. So your left arm is 100% vertical. And this is going to sound super weird, but I want you to imagine that we're all Mission Impossible Tom Cruise characters and I want you to reach up through your left arm so much that your right side body has no choice but to take a little side bend to the right. So you're reaching up so much through the left that then the right hand suddenly has to descend towards your left thigh. And you're reaching up so much through the left that suddenly your right ear has to drop towards your right shoulder. And you're reaching up so much through the left that you suddenly find a long side body stretch happening on your left side, finding length in your intercostals. Those are the muscles between the ribs. And then you just pause and you breathe and you keep reaching up through your left arm, up through the left fingers. And then on your next in-breath, start to reach up through the left arm and forward through the left hand in order to bring your spine back to warrior two pose. Fantastic. Just notice what you notice between the sides and then go ahead and cartwheel the hands down to the floor. Step yourself back to downward facing dog and just pause. Notice how the right side is. Notice how the left side is. And then we'll try all that on the other side. Inhale, sweep your right leg up and back. And then exhale, right knee to nose. Plant your foot between your hands. Now, again, we wanna ground down through the feet. Start to push down into your front foot and your back foot until your fingers become light. And then allow the hands to come to heart center in prayer pose. Now, from here, you're gonna pause in the prayer pose. Really push your sternum into your thumbs, lift your spine so you're in a diagonal from your back heel, through your pelvis, through your shoulders, through your crown. And then start to pull the belly back on the right side to rotate your left rib cage towards the right. 
And we're in this revolution towards the right. You're hugging your outer right hip into the left, the outer left hip into the right. And we're in this forward diagonal position. And then you'll inhale and unwind the spine. Go ahead and spin your back foot to the floor for warrior two. Keep pressing your sternum into your thumbs, your thumbs into your sternum here. And then again, draw the outer right hip in, press the knife edge of the left foot down. When you feel like your spine is really open and lengthened, you'll radiate through the arms and find yourself in Virabhadrasana too. Yeah, nice work. And then you just pause and you breathe. On your next in breath, you'll reach your right arm straight up to the sky. And you're going to reach up so much through the right hand that the left side body has to bend. Not because you're trying to bend it, but because you're trying to find as much length on that right side body. So you're feeling the armpits find more space on the right side. The ribs find more space on the right side. And then your left ear, yeah, and you'll find it go all the way down to your hip if you really reach up through that right arm. And then the left ear just kind of falls towards the left. The left hand kind of falls towards the left. And then you just breathe. When you're ready to come out, you'll reach up and forward through the right arm to bring the spine back to vertical. And then go ahead and cartwheel your hands down to the mat. Pause here. Step back to plank pose. And then just take a few breaths here in plank. Lift the back of your head away from the floor. Yep, push down into the hands and lift the armpits away from the floor. On your next in breath, shift your weight forward. And as you exhale, lower all the way down. Okay. Fantastic. With your hands right alongside your ribs, thumbs in line with your nipples, go ahead and separate your feet hip distance apart. Engage through the legs and push down through your toenails. Draw your tailbone back, your pubic bone down, your low belly forward. Draw your shoulders up towards your ears and draw the shoulder blades onto your back. Now pull the mat back to pull your sternum forward and lift the head up. Fantastic. Some of you will then reach so far back through your legs that your legs will start to get light and float away from the floor. Some of you will stay there. Some of you will squeeze the shoulder blades onto the back and hover your hands off the floor. Some of you will stay there. Some of you will draw your shoulder blades together even further and reach your hands back. And we'll all breathe here for three. Hug the shoulder blades together on the back for two. Draw your belly button forward to your sternum for one. And then exhale, lower all the way down. Go ahead and plant your hands alongside your ribs. And you come up either through hands and knees or tabletop. And then make your way back to downward facing dog. And you just pause and you breathe and you notice what you notice. How's the breath? How's the body? How are you? As best as you can, keep your head super heavy. Take a big breath in here. And then exhale, bend your knees and walk or float top of space. When you find yourself at the top of your mat, separate your feet about hip distance apart. Notice what it feels like to shift your weight a little further forward than normal. Notice what it feels like to shift your weight a little further back than normal. And then see if you can find your happy medium where your weight is evenly distributed between the fronts and the backs of your feet. Great. Next in breath, let's go ahead and halfway lift. Slide your hands up your shin bones. Again, feel what it feels like to shift your weight a little further forward or a little further back and then find your happy medium. Root down through the legs and then inhale, come all the way up. Great. Let's go ahead and release our hands by our hips if they're not there already. And then we're going to try what is called standing read or indolasana. So inhale, sweep both arms up and overhead. 
we're going to take it more like a dancerly type of thing. So I want you to touch your palms to touch. And then you're going to slowly draw your right hand down as you reach up through your left arm. Left arm reaches up, right hand drops, right shoulder drops, right hand drops, left arm reaches up. Now, once your left arm is really as up as it can be, your right hand is as low as it can be, push down into your right foot even more. And you might feel some more stuff opening on your left side. Let your head be heavy, reach up through your left arm, push down through your left foot. Fantastic. When you're ready to come out, the right hand slides back up, the head comes back up to center, both hands high. And then just lower your arms and just notice what you notice between the sides before we try that on the other side. And then we'll try that on the other side. Inhale, sweep both arms up and overhead. Let your palms touch. And then you're slowly gonna drag your left hand down your right hand. The right arm reaches up. The left ear starts to drop towards the left. The right hand slowly continues to drop. Now push down through your right foot, reach up through your right hand, and you're just trying to keep the low belly engaged. So this is all on our side body and not in our back. And then when you're ready to come out, the left hand will come back up and both arms high. Awesome. And then exhale, open the arms out and just notice what you notice here. Great. From here, let's interlace hands at our low back, draw shoulder blades together on our back. And then you're just gonna start to hinge forward at your hips. Once you go forward into your forward fold, you'll notice what it feels like to let your head be heavy. You'll notice what it feels like to have your arms reach straight up and maybe have them cascade over your head. But just take three breath cycles here, feeling what that feels like across the upper chest, what that feels like across your hamstrings. Notice how the breath is and see if you can take in a deeper breath. Fantastic. If your hands are anywhere other than your pelvis, bring your hands back to your pelvis. Slide the hands down your legs and to the floor. From here, inhale, halfway lift. As you exhale, bend your knees. Plant your palms, step yourself back to downward facing dog. Inhale, come forward into plank. Pause here. Lift up through the low belly, swivel both heels over to the right. Now you might stay here. You might reach your left arm up towards the sky and just keep lifting your under hip. So the right hip up and you'll breathe for three. You'll breathe for two. You'll breathe for one. Next exhale, lower the left hand back down. Lift up through the belly, up through the hips. Swivel your heels towards the left. Lift your underside hip up and maybe you might reach your right arm up and breathe for three and breathe for two, and breathe for one. Exhale, lower the hand down. Go ahead and shift your weight forward. Cycle through an up dog or cobra, whatever feels appropriate to you. But again, we're taking our time, we're breathing, we're noticing how it feels. And then you'll make your way back to downward facing dog as you're ready. Okay, let's lower our knees for a moment. Everyone make sure you have a blanket in the middle of your space and blocks to the upper outer corners of your space. That's a pretty quote, Jenny. I am betting you made that. <laughs> no, okay. All right, once you've got your blanket in the middle of your space and your blocks to the upper outer corners of your space, you'll make your way back to downward facing dog.
Awesome. From down dog, inhale, sweep your right leg up and back. As you exhale, draw the knee towards your nose. Gently plant your right foot on the floor. Lower your left knee to the blanket behind you. Now from here, some of you are gonna bring your hands onto your blocks and you're just gonna hang out right there and that's where you're gonna stay. And you'll have a good time just finding a nice gentle quad stretch here. Some of you will wiggle walk your right foot a little bit to the right and bring both hands to the inside edge of your right foot. Some of you will then bend your back knee, so that's your left knee. Take your left hand and grab the outside edge of your left foot. Some of you will stay right here happy as a clam. Some of you will start to walk your right hand up to your right thigh. What you want to pay attention to is where you feel a sensation across the belly, the middle of your left thigh. So it's not at your left knee. It's not at your left hip. And sometimes to find that you have to play with how your pelvis is. Are you drawing your tailbone down towards the floor? Does that do it for you? Are you lifting your tailbone up a little bit away from the floor? Does that do it for you? But you're just pausing in your breathing and you're noticing what you're noticing. And then if you're holding onto your left foot, open the left shoulder back, let the heart lift. There we go. All right, from here, we're gently gonna release. Draw your hands back forward to the blocks in front of you. Curl your back toes under and wiggle walk your right foot so it's back to the center of your spine or hip socket. Straighten your back leg long so you're in a weird low lunge and then straighten your front leg long so you're in a pyramid pose, Parjvottanasana. Step your back foot in a smidge and spin your back foot to the floor Walk the blocks underneath your shoulders and they might need to come to the highest height. Now from here, let's go ahead and all pull the kneecaps up on both legs. Draw your outer right hip back and then walk the left block underneath your left shoulder. Left block underneath your left shoulder. There we go. From here, let's lift our spine parallel to the floor. Draw your right hand to your heart. Push your sternum into your hand and lift your spine a little bit more. Yeah, there we go. Now from there, start to empty the belly on the right side, push down into the left hand. And as though someone is calling you, you are turning to hear the gaze, but you can only hear it through your left ear for some random reason. So you're pushing your sternum into your heart. Your left ear is trying to hear whoever is calling you and you're rotating your rib cage. Now, some of you will stay right there, really pushing the sternum into the heart to keep the chest open. Some of you will reach your right arm up towards the sky. And if you're doing that again, hugging the shoulder blades onto the back bar body to let the heart open. Yeah, and you'll breathe for three. You'll breathe for two. You'll breathe for one. Next in breath, go ahead and unwind. Lower the right hand back to the floor. Bend your front knee. Plant your palms. And then step back to downward facing dog. Take a moment to just notice this difference between the sides. And then we'll go ahead and try that on the other side. Inhale, sweep your left leg up and back. As you exhale, knee to nose. Gently plant the foot between your hands. And then from here, lower your back knee down to the blanket beneath you. Now, some of you would bring your hands to your blocks at this point and you'll hang out happy as a clam here. Some of you will wiggle walk your left foot over to the left and bring both hands to the inside edge of your front foot. And then again, some of you will stay here. Some of you will bend your back knee, your right knee. You'll take your right hand and grab the outside edge of your right foot. You might stay here if you feel a stretch in the middle of your right thigh. You might start to walk your left hand up to the belly of your left thigh. But again, we don't want the sensation in our right hip or our right knee. We want it in the middle of the thigh. And sometimes if you curl the tailbone down towards the floor, that helps. Sometimes if you lift the tailbone up a little bit from the floor, that helps. 
And then we'll see if we can keep opening our right shoulder. Nice job. And then make sure as best as possible, you are trying to square your torso towards the top of the space. So right ribs are still reaching forward. Great. And then we're gently going to release that. We'll come forward, bringing our hands back to our blocks. Curl your back toes under. Wiggle walk your left foot so it's more in line with your hip socket. Straighten your back leg long. Straighten your front leg long. And then step your back foot in for Parjvottanasana so you can spin the right foot to the floor. Now with the blocks underneath your shoulders, See if you can draw your outer left hip back, pull both kneecaps up. Yep, and then lift your spine parallel-ish to the floor. Now let's make sure our right block is underneath our right shoulder. Yep, then bring your left hand to your heart, lift your spine parallel-ish to the floor. Push your sternum into your heart and then start to scoop the belly on the left side as you rotate the rib cage to the left. Hugging the outer left hip back, lifting the outer or rather inner right thigh. And some of you will stay there, just pushing your sternum into your heart. Some of you will reach your left arm up. And you just pause. And even if the left arm is up, we're still imagining we're pushing into our imaginary hand on our heart so that that stays open. Yeah. On your next in-breath, gently unwind. Come to a low lunge facing the top of your space. Bend your back knee. Sorry, bend your front knee. Plant your palms and step yourself back to downward facing dog. From here, let's go ahead and inhale and come forward into plank. As you exhale, lower slower than you want to all the way to the mat. Your blanket can stay there unless it bothers you and then you can get rid of it. When you find yourself on your abdomen, as long as your blanket doesn't bother you, you don't need to move it. But if it does, go ahead and move it. You're gonna bend both of your knees. You're going to reach around and grab the outside edges of your feet with both hands. Now, either point or flex or floint your feet. So feel what feels best to you. And then when you're ready, you're going to do all those actions we've done before. So you're going to press your pubic bone down. You're going to lengthen your tailbone back. You're going to draw your navel forward. You're going to draw the shoulder blades onto your back and lift your ears in line with the tops of your shoulders. And then you'll start to kick your feet back. You don't have to come up very high, but you'll just feel what it feels like to be in this Danyarasana shape. Yeah, and you'll breathe for three. You'll breathe for two. You'll breathe for one. Very gently release your feet. Come back down to the floor. Great. Plant your hands alongside your lowest ribs. Curl your toes under and either through hands and knees or plank pose, make your way back to downward facing dog. And then you just notice what it feels like to be in your spine, in your body, in your breath. From down dog, take a deep breath in. As you exhale, bend your knees and step or float top of space. Yeah. And when you get to the top of your space, separate your feet about hip distance apart. Yeah, inhale, halfway lift. And exhale, fold in. Bring, inhale, bend your knees. As you exhale, scoop your belly away from your thighs. Bring your hands to heart center and sit your pelvis low for Utkatasana. 
So again, with hands at heart center, we're really pushing our sternum into our thumbs, sitting our pelvis as low as we can. And some of you will stay here. Some of you will reach your hands forward like zombies. Some of you will extend your arms alongside your ears, but you're just breathing here. You're really finding that lift of the heart, lift of the sternum. And we'll breathe for three. We'll breathe for two. We'll breathe for one. Next inhale, go ahead and reach up, look up, stand up. And then exhale, lower your hands alongside your hips. Take a moment to soften the gaze or close the eyes. Really feel the connection of your feet to the floor, your legs down into your feet, your pelvis into your legs, the spine down into the pelvis. And just soften any unnecessary tension. Cool. If the gaze is closed, gently open your eyes. Shift all the weight to your right leg. Bring your hands to your heart center and make your left leg light. You may come to the ball of your left foot. You might lift the whole left leg parallel-ish to the floor and knee bent. Now you'll start to squeeze your outer left hip to externally rotate the left leg and then see if you can plant your left foot on either the inside edge of your right thigh or maybe kickstand it against the right thigh or right calf. If you need to reposition your foot using your hands, by all means do that. But again, root down through the inside edge of your right thigh. Press your left foot into the right thigh. Press your sternum into your hands and maybe see if you can lift your gaze for Vrikshasana tree pose. Nice work. To come out of this, gently release the left leg. Plant the foot on the floor. And we'll try it on the other side. So we'll shift our weight over to the left. Start to make your right leg light. You might come to the ball of the foot. You might lift the whole leg parallel to the floor. Flex through the right foot and then squeeze your right hip to externally rotate the leg. And then see how you can plant your right foot maybe on the inner left thigh or maybe kickstand it against the left calf. If you need to use your right hand to reposition the foot, by all means do that. Yep. And then again, push your sternum into your thumbs, really root down through the inside edge of your left foot. And then you might choose to keep your hands here for the second go round. You might wanna grow your tree if you'd like, but we're just really paying attention to how we're breathing, how we're connecting. Yeah. Very gently, we'll unwind, releasing the right foot, planting the right foot to the floor. And then stand at the top of your space in Tadasana. Great. When you're ready, inhale, circle, sweep your arms up and overhead, Urdhva Hastasana. Exhale, fold forward at your hips, Uttanasana, forward fold. Inhale, halfway lift, Ardha Uttanasana. Exhale, bend your knees. Plant your palms, step back, downward facing dog. When you're ready, you can inhale and come forward into plank. Exhale through Chaturanga Dandasana. Inhale through an upward facing dog or cobra. And exhale back to a downward facing dog. And you'll just take three breaths there. Okay, we haven't done this in a while, so I'm gonna walk you through it. But if it looks like we may need help, I might stop us and demo, okay? So let's go ahead and inhale and come forward into plank. Swivel your heels to the right. You might stay there. You might lift your left arm up. You might stay here. You might lift your left leg up. You might bend your left knee and plant your left foot on the floor behind you. Bring your left hand to your heart. Push your hand into your heart, your heart into your hand. You might stay there. You might reach your left arm up towards the sky or over your head for wild thing. 
push down to the knife edge of your foot, your left foot, your right foot. Great. When you're ready, inhale, come back through plank. Lower the knees or go back to down dog, your choice. That was okay. Was that clear as mud? Clear as mud, cool. Thank you, lower your knees down. Have a little looky-loo. So we're focusing on, we haven't done um wild thing in a while. And so this whole idea of really pushing your hand into your heart helps because then it helps lift you up. So when we go into this, same general thing. So we're gonna go to plank, side plank, maybe stay here, maybe lift top leg, maybe put it back. We want to keep the same relationship between our shoulder and our wrist and the hand on the heart allows us to push in so that we can root down through the feet and lift up so that we can then go up. So I'm really pushing sternum into heart to connect to the floor and also to connect with the lift of the chest. Does that make sense? Okay, let's try the other side, which now I need to remember. Did we do the right side, Jenny? Great, cool, so we're doing the other side. Fantastic. Let's go ahead and come back to plank. So we're doing the right side now. So from plank, swivel your heels to the left. You might stay there, you might reach your right arm up. You might stay there, you might float your right leg up. Bend the right knee, plant the right foot on the floor behind you. Bring your right hand to your heart. Really push into your heart to push down into your left hand and lift. Push down into your right foot and then maybe reach the left arm up. Maybe reach the left arm alongside your ears. And then you just pause and you breathe and you notice. Yeah. And then when you're ready, you'll gently come out of this. You'll come back to plank. You'll come back to down dog or child's pose and you'll just take a few breaths and rest. Fantastic. And you just notice. All right. Let's go ahead and lower our knees and sit. Do we want to try that again, each side or are we good? I got a thumbs up to try it again. So if you'd like to try it again, go ahead and try it again. If you're like, Jessica, I'm done. You're going to stay in child's pose or down dog. So those that want to try it again, by all means, go ahead and try it again. And again, you're taking your time as you go into it, stage by stage. And the slower that you move, if you're moving into it, the more you give yourself the opportunity to experience the nuance of it. And if you're like, Jessica, I'm not doing that, wherever you are is great and you're breathing. And then those that are not doing the wild thing, make your way to Nakrasana. So on your bellies, heads up, seven up style. And then after you've done your wild thing, both sides, you're going to make your way onto your belly, hands up, heads up, seven up style. Nice work, guys. And then when you find yourself in the cross, and then you're stacking your forearms right on top of each other, your forehead on your forearms, your big toes can touch if that feels good to you with your heels splayed or maybe you widen your legs and you have your heels spin in and your toes spin out. But you'll just take a few breath cycles here. And to the best of your ability, I'd like you to be able to breathe into your bellies, into the fronts of the rib cage where the diaphragm intersects. And the more that you can breathe in there, you might find that you can distend, push out the belly towards the floor. And then that might create space in the low back. And then you might notice if you can soften any tension around your shoulders. 
Yeah. If you can soften any tension around your mouth, your neck, your face, your jaw. Sometimes our heart opening moments can cause us to grip and hold things in other places, but for genuine, for things that I think are genuinely sustaining, I think that there has to be a sense of ease and play and freedom to them. And so you're just allowing your body to breathe. And you'll just take three more breath cycles here. When you're ready, let's go ahead and reach your right arm forward. Roll on to your right side and then make your way onto your back. When you find yourself on your back, make sure there's nothing underneath you. And make sure your blanket is somewhere nearby. Okay. And then we'll start by just bending our knees, plant both feet on the floor. Cross your right ankle over the top of your left thigh. Thread your hands through the whole of your legs. And you'll just stay here in Suki Rondrasana figure four. You got it, Sandy. And you'll flex through the feet. You might be completely still. You might rock a little bit right to left. You might press your right forearm into your right inner thigh and just feel what that feels like. Great. We just got one to two more breath cycles here. See if you can release any tension around your shoulders, around your neck. At the end of your next exhalation, release your hands. Draw the left foot to the floor. Draw the right foot to the floor and just take a moment to pause. Notice the difference between the sides. And then you'll switch sides. So you'll cross your left ankle over the top of your right thigh. Flex through the feet. Draw the configuration of your legs towards your chest. Thread your hands through the whole of your legs. And again, you might be still, you might rock a little bit right to left. You might lightly press your left forearm into your left inner thigh. But again, you just pause and you breathe. Those that are in movement, go ahead and come to stillness. Go ahead and release your hands, draw the right foot to the floor, draw the left foot to the floor. Pause and just notice how it's feeling, how you're feeling. Open the arms out to the right and to the left. Lift your pelvis up and slide your bum towards the right. Put your pelvis back down and then take whatever supine twist you want with the knees falling to the left. So maybe you double stack the legs. Maybe you take a Garudasana. Maybe you have one leg straight and one leg bent, but just pay attention to what it feels like to be in the supine twist. We're gonna stay here for about 30 seconds to a minute. And I want you to just notice what it feels like to give yourself permission to really be in the twist, to let things unwind at the pace at the speed that they wish to unwind. Noticing how you can breathe deep into the back body, perhaps on the right side, feeling things soften and loosen just by giving them time, space, attention. We've got about four more breath cycles here. Again, notice how deep and full you can make your breath. At 
the end of your next exhalation. So gently inhale and you'll come back through center and you'll just take a moment to pause there. Really just notice what it feels like to be still in center. What do you notice between the sides? And then as you're ready, you'll explore the other side. So arms open out into the T-shape, push down into your feet, lift your hips over to the left, and then allow your legs to fall in whatever configuration you'd like towards the right. And again, you've got time. How does it feel to let the body marinate in the pose? Or does the side need a little bit more breath? And again, you just breathe. Big breaths. We've got about four more breath cycles here. When you're ready, you'll gently inhale and come back through center. Take a moment to be still. And then last little shape, go ahead and draw your knees into your chest. Give yourself a squeeze. Tuck your chin towards your chest, lifting the head away from the floor, really being in that little embryo, that little seed shape. And after you've been in that sh shape for a couple breaths, you'll allow yourself to slowly unwind and unfurl. I would encourage you to wrap and cover the body just as we started, going back into a deep, restful Shavasana. And when you find your way into your Shavasana, Again, I would encourage you to see how you could allow the body to spread and take up space. So that the hands are far enough away from your pelvis so that it feels like the shoulder blades really just rest onto the back, rest into the floor. And then notice what it feels like to really you might need to lift your pelvis up, but sliding the pelvis away from the shoulders. And then notice what it feels like to really allow the legs to take up space so it feels like the whole pelvis is rooted. And the arms are able to be extended out to the side and the palms face up. And then you'll just take three audible breaths in through the nose and out through the mouth. And then with every subsequent breath, I invite you to just allow more and more of the body to settle into the support beneath you, to be nurtured by the blanket and the support that's all around you. And anytime your mind wanders, as it may, just return your awareness to your breath. Return your awareness to just the idea of 
letting go in this moment, in this shape. I'll leave you here with you for a few more moments or a few more breaths. And I'll let you know when it's time to come out. Gently return your awareness to your breath. As you come back to your breath, just take a moment to check in. So if there's any part of you longing to linger in this shape, by all means, please stay here. When you are ready to move on, you'll allow movement to enter your body in whatever way feels most appropriate for you at this point. Those in stillness, stay as long as you'd like. Those in movement, start to make your way to one of your sides. Pause for a few breaths on one of your sides and just breathe. From your side, you'll press into your top hand, roll your chest a little bit more towards the floor and draw yourself to a tall and comfortable seat. Mm -hmm. 
And then when you are vertical, I do encourage you to elevate your pelvis on a block or a blanket. Fidget until you feel like you are comfortable. So if that means you need to remove flesh from underneath your sit bones, do that. If that feels like you need to roll your shoulders, do that. And then you'll soften your gaze and close your eyes. Plant one hand on your heart space. Plant the other hand on your abdomen. Sit as tall as you can, breathing into both those two points. I think our ability to show up in our lives as we are best suited requires that we have this connection between our gut and our heart, a sense of intuition and our courage to step into it. As you take these last few breath cycles here, I'd like you to just notice what you notice. Trusting that the more you listen and act according to your own intuition, the stronger it becomes. But the more you practice those little acts of courage, the more courageous you become. You'll take three more breaths here. And then we'll go ahead and complete our practice with a collective breath, followed by a collective om. Bring your hands to heart center, Anjali Mudra. Really press the palms into each other. Receive the weight of your thumbs into your sternum and lift your sternum to your thumbs. Soften your chin slightly towards your hands and gently exhale all the breath from your mouth. Take a big breath in. Big breath out. Inhale for OM, join if you'd like. Draw your thumbs to your third eye. May our thoughts be clear. Draw your thumbs to your lips. May our words be kind. And draw your thumbs to your heart center. May our hearts be open. The light and the breath within me salute the light and the breath within you. Namaste.